Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game For Glory. This was sent to me by Spielcraft Games and is designed by Alex Wolf. Now this is the premium edition. Uh, Enter the Age of Gladiators. In For Glory, you are a Lanista, building your gladiator school and clashing against your rival in epic arena battles in ancient Rome. Let me show you how to play. So For Glory is a gladiatorial combat deck building game for two players. Um, you are trying to gain six glory tokens, these guys here, um, by winning arena battles. You will build your deck to increase uh, your um, odds of winning uh, and prepare for combat during the machinations phase and clash with your opponent's gladiators during the arena phase. So like I said, two phases, machinations and arena. In the machinations phase, uh, you take actions. So you can buy, play, or and or reserve. If we look over here, we have the public supply. Each turn you draw seven cards from your deck um, and you can use these income cards and also coins to buy cards to add to your deck. So if I add these five income cards, they're one coin each, and I had two coin tokens, I could uh, discard these and spend the coins and I could buy, let's say, this card. Um, the cost is in the bottom right, and whenever you buy cards, they go straight to your discard. So my income cards I used, I get discarded, and then I place this, place this in my discard pile. One of the kind of cards you can buy is an income card. When you play this card, you can use it for four coins. However, in this game, you don't get change back if you spend extra, uh, and also each action you do to buy a card, um, you must do them separately. So it's not like you could split this up and get like two two cost cards, for example. But these can be useful to help you get better cards later. Another action you can do is play a card from your hand as an action. For example, fresh perspective here, you gain one coin token and you may discard the face up cards from one supply deck, then turn three new cards from that supply deck face up. Here's one you can buy, lucrative investment. Just whenever you play it, you gain two coin tokens. A very useful one that you start out with is Cull. Gain two coin tokens or choose a card other than call in your hand and remove it from the game permanently to help you, you know, call your deck. Patron cards like this one grant you influence. Influence is useful because that's how you put, that's how you can have gladiators. So patrons go in your villa um, like this when played and you get influence. Gladiator cards like this one, like Hoplomachus here, need a certain number of influence. This guy needs two. Uh, this is their attack, their health, and their initiative. And also, some of these ones you can buy have special abilities, like while Hoplomachus is exhausted, each other gladiator loses all text abilities. So if I had enough influence here, uh, and I had Hoplomachus, I could play him in one of these arenas over here. There are different types. There are Fleeting Glory Arenas and the Lasting Glory Arena. If you put your gladiator in one of the Fleeting Glory Arenas, the other one is off limits for that round. Um, so there's always one of these two, and then this one are in play. Now, if for any reason you lose influence in your villa, and you can no longer uh, afford to have the number of gladiators in play, then you have to remove gladiators that exceeds the influence, uh, starting with fleeting glory uh, and going to lasting glory. Another action you can do is reserve. Tactics cards are cards you can play in battle, like this one might, each of your gladiators gains one attack until the end of the battle. Or a reaction card like Deflect. When damage is assigned, reassign up to two damage from a target gladiator to another target gladiator. Um, and in order to reserve these cards for combat, um, there's a reserve pile to the right of your board. You place them face down here. Now at any time, you can buy these cards back using coins. So if I have two cards in here, I can spend two coins. And in fact, you have to spend enough to take all your cards back. If you can't, you can't, you can't just take one or some of them. You gotta take all of them. If you pay the money, then you'll have the cards in your hand for the battle. Now, once you've done your actions of buying cards, to playing cards, reserving cards, then you discard the rest of your cards and then you draw seven from your deck. If your, disc if your deck runs up, you shuffle your discard pile, like in most deck building games, shuffle it and that's your new deck. Then the supplies get refilled. So any anything that was uh, purchased, you replace them until you make sure all of them have three cards. Uh, and then you check for an arena phase. So 
one of you will have what's called the crowd's favor um, token. And on that person, at the end of that person's turn, they check to see if enough gladiators are on the board to trigger bloodlust. Right now, the first boast card here has six bloodlust. So right now, with just this configuration, uh, this guy has two bloodlusts, so nothing would happen. But let's pretend we had a Hoplomachus here and a Hoplomachus here. In this case, it's now two, four, six, which would meet the current requirement for bloodlust. At the end of the turn of the person who has crowd's favor, you will then immediately go into arena phase. This is where you fight. Starting with a player without crowd's favor, first you can do what's called late registration. So you, you play with the gladiators you have on the board. However, if you want to add new ones, you can spend three coins each card until both players decide they are ready. So let's say I had uh, Velus here. Um, when Velus enters an arena, deal one damage to a target gladiator. If I want to, if I have him in my hand and I want to add him late, I can spend three coins and put him in, and then he would actually deal damage. Once both fighters are set, then you fight battle, starting with the fleeting arena and then the lasting arena. So first you add up your agility. Uh, in this case, this one has three, this one has three. Uh, if there was a difference, then whoever had more initiative would go first. Otherwise, whoever has the crowd's favor token breaks the tie. Then each player takes turns doing combat. On your turn, you can attack and do an optional tactic if you'd like. So if you have a ready gladiator in your arena, you tap them and you can use them to attack. So this guy does three damage. Uh, so I tap him, he would do three to this guy. And you just put the damage on there like so. I could then also use a tactics card if I had one. Like I could play this tactic, Brutal Strike, deal two more damage to a target gladiator. However, your opponent can also react uh, and do something like Withstand, which would prevent up to two damage from a target gladiator. Regardless, you attack and then you play a card if you would like. Then the other player would take a turn, do three damage back, and you keep going until both players pass, if they have no longer any of any tactics or ready gladiators. In that case, then, you ready all active gladiators. And then you, again, you go back to the initiative step, see who goes first, and you continue. And the damage stays on the gladiators. Now, in this case, player one would defeat player two, and this gladiator would get discard discarded. Now, if a battle starts, and your opponent doesn't have any gladiators in their battle arena, uh, you will automatically win the battle. If you win a battle in a fleeting glory arena, not only do you get a glory, which is a victory point, but also, this sword, this reigning champion token, moves to your side. Now, this means you have access to this ability, Kassanum. You may reserve gladiators, and as a tactic, you can exhaust Kassanum to put a gladiator from your hand into the active arena as a surprise. If you win a battle in a lasting glory one, you get two glory, and you actually get to put this in your villa, and this is a permanent buff for you. Each of your gladiators gains one HP or Pazuori. And then you take the top boast card. Um, this just clogs up your deck. What happens is the next time a battle starts will be triggered by more Bloodlust, 14. So the next machination phase will take a little longer. If there's a draw, then nobody takes anything. Once all the battles are done, you replace this with a new card. This one says, Florentia, you may split damage dealt by your gladiators among any number of gladiators. This one, Capua. Uh, reaction when a gladiator you own is defeated you may discard one card to ready a target gladiator the crowd's favorite token goes to whichever player has the least glory and then you refill your hands to up to seven and you go back to machinations and preparing for the next fight and that's pretty much the game you're buying cards improving your deck playing more patrons so you can play more gladiators and trying to compete and defeat your opponent's gladiators so you can seize the glory let me show you just a couple other examples of some of the cards you could get so another example of a tactic could be Fortitude. Each of your gladiators gains plus one health until the end of the battle. Here's a patron like Legatus. Add plus one initiative to your total when determining an uh, initiative, so you can speed up your initiative in your battles. Uh, Provocatore, here's a gladiator. He has a reaction whenever he enters an arena, you get to draw two cards. And he has four attack, one HP, and zero initiative. So he's slow, but he hits hard. 
However, you need the uh, influence in order to play him. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Try to be the first to six. Once you gain six, you instantly win. And that's the game. So this was really solid. Uh, first off, the components in the premium edition are really nice. Um, I love metal coins, and even the swords and the helmet were a nice touch. Uh, I'm also always a fan of deck builders, and I like that this one gives you a culling card right in the basic deck to speed up the fun. That's always good. Building up your influence with your patrons is fun, as you, you know, that way you can play more gladiators. This is definitely a game where you have to be aggressive, because if you're not careful, that bloodlust value, which triggers the arena phase, can get filled up if you're not careful, if you're not fast enough to put your guys down. And if you aren't prepared, you, know, you can get pretty fucked. Um, it's a fun, tense race as you're building up your forces in preparation for that grand moment when, all right, Bloodlust is here, let's go. Um, the cards themselves are wonderfully tricky, full of, you know, fun powers. Uh, the back and forth combat of hit, hit, hit is really satisfying. And then getting the new abilities from arena cards that you win is also just a nice rewarding feeling. Um, the area control in this game kind of reminds me of a game I, uh, called Blood Bowl Team Manager. And that also had similar, like, you know, arena, arena, arena. Uh, I like that mechanic. Um, because I enjoy, you know, sending units out. Okay, you go here, you go here, and focusing on different victories. That's always a very fun, fun, uh, concept. Overall, uh, I really like this a lot. Uh, if you're a deck building fan like me, uh, you will enjoy that aspect. And then the area control and the tricky sort of visceral combat back and forth. Uh, if you like that kind of one-on-one -on -one back and forth. Oh yeah, I play this, I play this, I play this. You'll also like this a lot. Uh, it's very aggressive, but very, very fun.